28, 2020. And I'll call the meeting to order. And to on the call are Ron Paul, County Attorney, and Jolene Sanchez, Clerk to the Board Administrator. Ms. Sanchez, would you call the roll of the board, please? Yes, Commissioner Conti. Good morning. Good morning. Commissioner Sharp? Here. Commissioner Baker? Here. Commissioner Jackson? Here. Commissioner Holland? Here. Thank you, Ms. Sanchez. Um, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. and to the and republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, 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 God indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. For all. Mr. Carl, are there any modifications to the agenda this morning? No, there are no modifications, but I, I would just mention that there's been a request to combine items 7A and 7C on the general business agenda just for purposes of, of taking public comment. Okay, thank you. We will do that. And, um, can I have a motion to adopt the agenda as modified or changed? I guess it's a mod slight modification in order. Madam Chair, I'll move to approve. Yes, I'll move to approve the agenda as uh, amended. Mr. Baker will second that motion. Motion made by Commissioner Tati, seconded by Commissioner Baker. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Abstentions? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. This is the time in our meeting where we receive citizen comments, and uh, I will ask if there's anyone on the line, press, press star 3 to unmute. And you'll have three minutes. And this is for any comments that are not on the agenda, uh, for any items that are not on the agenda this morning. Michelle, do we have anyone who would like to speak? I'm not sure I'm looking at I don't see anybody for comment not on the agenda. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, we have uh, one set of minutes to approve this morning, and that's June, our meeting for June 23rd, 2020, and we had a full board. I'll ask for a motion. Madam Chair, I'll move to approve the minutes of 7 June 23rd. Uh, sorry, June 23rd. That's a, <laughs> my mistake. Okay. I'll make okay, made by Commissioner Conti. Nancy Jackson will second. Seconded by Commissioner Jackson. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. And now move to the consent agenda. Ask for a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Motion made by Commissioner Conti. Uh, Commissioner Baker will second. Seconded by Commissioner Baker. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any opposed? Uh, um, okay. Uh, I'll, that motion passes unanimously. I'm going down to general business. We have our first general business item is adoption of ordinance 2020-02 establishing limited retail marijuana stores. And we also have a, a public hearing, which is LDC 20-003 Land Development Code Amendment for Recreational Marijuana. And we will vote on each one of those items separately, but I'll ask for public comment um, at the end of the presentation for, uh, for both of these. We'll have one public comment period. 
So, um, let's see. Mr. Carl, do you want to um, talk about the adoption of the ordinance as well as the land development code? Yes. So, these two matters are being heard together because they both involve essentially the same thing. So, the first item is uh, the uh, consideration of the adoption of proposed ordinance number 2020-02 regarding the establishing of limit incorporated in Rapo County. A first reading of this ordinance was held on July 14, 2020, and notice of this hearing was published in the uh, July 16, 2020 edition of the Villager, so the board has jurisdiction to proceed on that item. And then the second item, which is listed as 7C on your agenda, um, just one second, I'm going to pull it up. Um, it is a public hearing on land, a land development code amendment number LBC 20-003, which is also regarding uh, the same topic. And um, notice of this land development code amendment was published on the July 9th. 2020 edition of the Villagers, so the board also has jurisdiction to proceed on that item as well. Um, as indicated, it's best if uh, at the end, after taking uh, hearing comment from the public and hearing the presentation from Bill Skinner, uh, and, and after your deliberations, if you do two separate uh, motions, one for each. Thank you, Mr. Call. Uh, Mr. Skinner, would you like to do a presentation? You know, I'm not going to lay on the land development code, but uh, and then but to commissioners, we can ask any questions of Mr. Carl or Mr. Skinner. But go ahead, Mr. Skinner. Yes, briefly. Uh, this is William Skinner from the county's land planning division. So, in, in 2019, the owners of the Four existing medical marijuana dispensaries in Arapahoe County approached the Board of County Commissioners and asked if they could potentially expand their medical sales to include recreational marijuana products. The board engaged in a number of study sessions, uh, having decided to move forward with considering an ordinance, which is on today's schedule. Everyone realized we need to amend our land development code to keep step with that potential ordinance. And LBC 20-003, our amendment to our land development code to do that. The land development code needed to be amended so that it didn't contradict the potential ordinance if it was a law. The ordinance and the corresponding, corresponding land development code amendment essentially remove prohibitions on the sale of recreational marijuana and all references to medical versus recreational marijuana in the land development code for the four existing dispensaries that are grandfathered in prior to the adoption of land development code regulations and ordinances that prohibit all other marijuana land uses in the county. These four locations are considered legal nonconforming and will continue to have the option to operate. If this ordinance and this land development code are adopted today, then they can expand to also sell recreational marijuana products. There will not be an expansion in the number of locations that are referred to specifically by address in the Land Development Code, and I believe the ordinance as well, and there will not be an expansion in the physical size of the operation. So that's why the ordinance refers to a limited expansion or limited rate retail sales. The Planning Commission heard this through the Land Development Code changes on July 21st, 2020. They had some questions. We had three external agencies that had some comments. The Land Development Code heard the planners, or heard the staff speak about, it, respond to those concerns. And having done so, they voted to recommend approval of this Land Development Code change by a vote of five to two. Some members of the public spoke at the Planning Commission 
I believe there were five, and all five of them spoke in support of this potential change. I'm open to questions. Are there any questions for Mr. Skinner? Madam Chair? Do I have Commissioner Baker? Yes. Hey, well, um, were there any other comments received from the general public, uh, email or phone calls into you guys? No, ma'am. Never one. Thank you. Is there any, any additional questions? Okay. Okay. Hearing none, I will open the, um, the 7A or the adoption of Ordinance 2020-02 establishing limited retail marijuana stores is a general business item and the uh, land development code amendment is a public hearing. But I will um, ask for any Anyone, any member of the public who would like to speak on either of these issues is welcome to do so. And press star three to unmute, unmute. And Michelle, do we have anyone who would like to speak on either of these uh, items? I'm just waiting for the queue to come in. So Hi, commissioners. We do have some individuals. Um, the first one is a caller with the last four digits of 9593. Sir, you're live. If you could provide your name and address, you'll have three minutes. Yes, good morning. This is Tom Sapiro. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Perfect. Uh, this is Tom Sapiro, S-A-P-I-R-O. I live um, in Cherry Hills Village. And I have been a patient of the cure for years. Um, they are, um, I, I just, I'm sorry, I had a, a comment on um, the proficiency, if, that's, if I'm allowed to say that. Yes. Yeah, and, and sir, if, if, um, if you could give Michelle your exact address after, the, after your comments, that would be great. Thank oh, you. Sure, I'll give it to you. Please, yeah, please go yeah. ahead. Of course, uh, my address is 5959 South Moore Lane, Cherry Hill Village, Colorado, 80111. Thank you. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to uh, lend my, uh, my statements regarding the uh, professional atmosphere that I experience every time I go to uh, the Cure Dispensary. Um, they have, uh, I have uh, unfortunately had a uh, bout with Hodgkin's disease, which I have uh, cured, and uh, they have been instrumental in my pain management uh, regarding my multiple uh, radiation treatments monthly. Dragged out for a couple of years, two and a half years, and um, I, this is the fact that I chose to deal with that pain regarding, uh, regarding my Hopkins versus a, uh, a more chemical um, alternative, which was suggested by my, uh, my physicians. That's going to be my cancer doctor. And um, I have um, tasted the pain, and I think that is because of the, uh, the intelligent suggestions that uh, my dispensary made regarding um, specifically my pain management. They are not only professional, but I get treated as an adult in somewhat of the, uh, maybe not an adult environment. Um, this dispensary specifically uh, respects the fact that I'm not just there for a good time and I need, um, I need something to help me with uh, truly debilitating pain. And um, I just can't really say enough about these guys. I've been through a number of dispensaries throughout the last uh, three, four years, and I have consistently returned to the cure to, um, to manage what was really unmanageable pain. Uh, the staff there is extraordinarily knowledgeable about uh, the depth of contemporary products that are thrust upon the uh, uh, the general public, and it is uh, difficult, uh, frankly, to uh, discern between.
between um, uh, general pain management medicines and the ones that uh, the, the chair provided to me. Um, I literally have no lingering pain from a radiation therapy. And uh, what I suggested to me and how I should manage that was approved by my physicians and um, truly helped me in, in the last three or four years manage uh, what was going on in my life. Um, staff there, a lot of, lot of changes. Uh, there is, has been, uh, there are a number of people that have been there for a few years, and um, they are, you know, there to help me. They've become uh, important cogs in my pain management. They're fair, polite, always, but never the professional. Um, I think that's, that's all I need to say. Unless anybody has any questions, I'm more than happy to answer. Well, thank you, sir. Appreciate your your um, testimony and glad you are better. Absolutely. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes. Yeah. yeah, this is Commissioner Coffey. Yes, um, I would ask uh, Mr. Spiral, um, so what is your opinion of this uh, store adding recreational to uh, their repertoire, which is what is before us today, the decision uh, before us today? You certainly addressed uh, that they were very professional with you from a medical standpoint, but that's not the decision that it's for us today. As they are now. Um, again, because uh, I'm older than 21 years old, um, I understand the importance of a, uh, a business not only being run as a business, but also as a uh, compassionate caretaker for people that need uh, that need help. And um, I found this to be the, the right place to be. I, I, I can't think of any reason at all that they would not be as professional and as demanding of their customers um, and their adherence to Colorado laws that they are now. Thank you, sir. Uh -huh. Michelle, do you have? Do we have another individual who would like to testify? We do. We do. We have a caller with the last four digits of seven eight four eight. You could provide your name and address for the record. You'll have three minutes to speak. Hey, good morning. This is Bill McKernan, uh, 3280 Cherry Ridge Road, Cherry Hills Village, Colorado, 80113. I'm going to be very brief. I'm, I work for Cure, so I just wanted to, as a Rapaho County resident, just uh, testify, obviously, in favor of this. This will allow us to remain competitive in the marketplace. We've been there for 10 years. It will allow us to continue to employ the employees we have and um we would, you know, our plan, as you guys know, is to be dual use. So we will continue to provide medical um, marijuana services as well as recreational. And I think this will benefit the county with um, a slight additional um, tax revenues that the county um, will be able to obtain. So that, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who would like to testify? And if you um, would like to, please press star three. Unmute. I see no one else in the queue on this item. Okay, thank you very much. I will, uh, with no one else, I will close the public hearing. Uh, our public comment period for adoption of Ordinance 2020-02, establishing limited retail marijuana stores, as well as the public hearing for the LBC 20-003 Land Development Code Amendment Recreational Marijuana. Are there any additional comments or questions from the board or staff? Madam Chair, uh, this is Commissioner Jackson. When it's time, I'll go ahead and make the motion. Um, okay. I have a comment. 
I have a comment, but I don't have any questions. So I can wait to see if there's other questions first. Thank you, Commissioner Jackson. Are there any comments or questions? Commissioner Cassie? Okay, I, I, I'm sorry. Um, too bad we don't have a hands up uh, or raise uh, feature on this, but uh, I, uh, you know, I think I'm, I'm well on record. Um, you know, my, my opposition to this is not based on on you know the lack of you know tax revenue that it may raise or or anything of that nature. Uh, my opposition uh, is is simply based on on my own personal life story, and when you have one of your own that you have raised and watched go from pot to Oxycontin to heroin. Uh, when you talk to numerous people in rehab uh, that are counseling people uh, that are now addicted to much stronger drugs, and unanimously they will look back and say that this began through a recreational marijuana habit that developed. Uh, when you hear statistics that say 85% of all recreational users will go on to try something harder, you just don't have to take the numbers very far before you understand, you know, the damage, the potential damage to kids. And when you've been on the receiving of that end of that uh, from one of your own flesh and blood, uh, this is what has developed my greater understanding uh, when you learn what I have learned regarding the way that it manipulates the dopamine system in the brain, it may not go quite as high as opioids, but it goes a whole lot higher than what's recommended. It doesn't hit the same receptors, hits different receptors, I understand that, but it's still releasing that dopamine and it's still playing on the dopamine system. For all these reasons and many more that I've previously articulated, uh, I will reluctantly have to be a no vote. That is not any uh, ill intention towards um, Mr. McKernan, or his, his business. I'm sure he is well complying with Colorado law, and, and I'm sure he runs a fine establishment. Uh, nothing, nothing to say in, in degradation to him or his business or anything else or anyone else in these businesses. Uh, it is simply uh, my disdain for the recreational marijuana period and for the dangerous message that I think it sends our kids. I have had uh, teenagers sit in my own living room uh, and, and say to me the words, surely if they legalized it, it can't hurt you. And literally this is the message that I fear that we are sending kids. Uh, the more we legalize it, the more we make it available. and. Uh, Anyway, that, that is just my own life experience and uh, um, that has formed my feelings on this issue, and I will have to be on, on a reluctant no vote today. Thank you, Commissioner Cotty. I think I heard Commissioner Baker that wanted to make a comment. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, my heart goes out to Commissioner Cotty, and I, I understand her personal reasons for uh, being a no vote on this. I did want to point out that, that as you mentioned, kids, uh, what kids say, um, of course, we're not legalized, but we're not allowing this to be for kids. Um, it's it's not something that, I mean, the age restrictions will still, surely still apply. And we have evidence that these four businesses in Arapahoe County are completely compliant with the age restrictions. Uh, the key word for me in this ordinance is limited. Uh, it truly is limited for established businesses in Arapahoe County that have done a good job of complying with all of the state's and local government's medical marijuana rules. Um, this is, again, the first step towards collecting those sales taxes that we're currently not taking advantage of. We're leaving on the table, so that's a big part of that. I do think it may be a step that we could um, then possibly consider later on. Um, agricultural grow operations in the rural part of Arapahoe County, which would benefit my constituents that are already 
growing crops, maybe not marijuana, but maybe hemp or other things to help supplement their income. Um, so I see that as a progressive um, thing that we need to consider at least later on once um, we take this big step today. So I will be a, uh, for those reasons, I will be a yes vote on this. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Baker. Um, this is Nancy Sharp, and I, I will also be a no vote. Um, and again, it is not a reflection on these four um, stores. They have done a good job, and we don't have any compliance complaints. And I think I uh, commend them for that, particularly from uh, when this started out in a new industry and in Colorado. So I um, appreciate that. My my no vote is because the largest part of my commissioner district, which is the city of Centennial and the city of Greenland Village, neither of them have supported um, uh, medical or retail marijuana locations in the city. And so that's that would be to support the citizens, the largest majority of the citizens in my district. Uh, so that will I'll be a no vote, but, um, but I do appreciate the good job that uh, all four of these um, stores have, have done in complying with all the state and local laws and regulations. So with that, unless there are any additional comments, I'll turn it back to... Um, was that Commissioner Holland? Yes, Madam Chair. Go ahead, Commissioner. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the um, uh, this is a, a, a difficult decision uh, for me personally. Uh, however, I think that uh, in light of the um, in light of the record of the four stores that have uh, really been been uh, successful in adhering to all the regulations and requirements um, that uh, the state and local ordinances uh, uh, require. Uh, I'm a, a supportive vote. I'm going to vote yes on this simply because uh, currently those, those stores are, are very limited in, in their ability to maintain uh, a profitable operation. By expanding this, this will allow uh, them to be successful and serve their, their primary purpose, which is medical uh, medical marijuana, uh, as was evidenced by the earlier testimony. So my vote will be yes, and uh, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. And I'll turn it back over to Commissioner Jackson for the motion. Any, any additional comments? Thank you, Madam Chair. I mean, it's one of the few times where um, people have already kind of telegraphed their vote, so um, that's kind of interesting. So, yeah, um, two of the marijuana um, uh, uh, shops are in my district. Um, my constituents are supported. The voters of Colorado um, who were supported, and therefore um, I need to adopt the Rapid County Ordinance. Uh, number 2020-02 as presented on today's date and to order publication of ordinance 2020-02 as required by the state statute. Commissioner Baker will second. Motion made by Commissioner Jackson, seconded by Commissioner Baker. All in favor? Well, let's do roll call if we could, uh, Ms. Sanchez. Commissioner Coffey? Respectfully, no. Commissioner Sharp? No. Commissioner Baker? Yes. Commissioner Jackson? Yes. Commissioner Holland? Yes. Motion passes three to two. Thank you very much. We'll now go to our um, LDC 20-003 Land Development Code Amendment Recreational Marijuana, and I'll ask for a motion. Madam Chair, this is Commissioner Holland. Go ahead, Commissioner. Yes, I move approval of, the, of this motion. 
Do we have a, um, a formal motion? Read, Madam Chair. I Go ahead, Commissioner Baker. Yeah, I, 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 I would say that in the case of LBC 20-003, Rappel County Land Development Code, Recreational Marijuana Regulations. I have received the staff report, including all exhibits and attachments, and have listened to the staff presentation and the public comment as presented at the hearing, and hereby move to approve this application based on the findings in the staff report subject to the following conditions. One, staff will make corrections and revisions to the proposed language as directed by the county attorney prior to incorporating the approved amendment into the land development code for publication. Um, this is Ron. Does anyone hear me? We can hear you. Okay. I, I was trying to interrupt at the beginning of the motion. I apologize, um, but I, I couldn't tell if anyone heard me. So. Um, the, the motion that you just read, Commissioner, is for conditional approval. Um, I think there's a mistake in the motion. If you could redo the motion without the part saying it's subject to the following condition. Yes, I can do that. Then I think it would be an appropriate motion. Okay, I will revise my motion, Madam Chair, with your permission. Debbie, thank you very much. Commissioner Baker, go ahead. In the case of LBC 20-003, Arapahoe County Land Development Code, Recreational Marijuana Regulations, I have reviewed the staff report, including all exhibits and attachments, and have listened to the staff presentation and any public comment as presented at the hearing, and hereby move to approve this application based on the findings in the staff report. Madam Chair, I will second that motion. Okay, motion made by Commissioner Baker, seconded by Commissioner Holland. Um, Ms. Sanchez, would you do a roll call of the board, please? Commissioner Conti? Reluctantly and with great respect, no. Commissioner Sharp? I will, uh, since the um, first motion was passed, I do believe that we need to have land development code amendments. Um, so I will support this um, uh, LDC 20-003. Commissioner Baker? Yes. Commissioner Jackson? Mr. Jackson? I think we may have lost Commissioner Jackson. Okay, Commissioner Holland. Yes. Okay, so it looks like the motion's going to pass three to one. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what happened. Uh, Commissioner Jackson, are you back on? Okay. Not hearing. Um, motion passes 3-1. Uh, and um, we'll, we will go move on to, and we'll try to get uh, Commissioner Jackson back on, but we'll move on to our, our next general business item, which is LDC 20-002, Amendments to Land Development Code Floodplain Flood Management Regulations. And our presenter is Sue Wu, and uh, engineer, engineering services, public works, and development. So, Sue, would you like to go ahead? Sure. Madam Chair, this is... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just I wanted to just mention this is Bob Hill, at the Jura Foundation. Um, this has been. Oh, Ron already did that, didn't he? I know. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead for this for the yeah. floodplain management. Please go ahead. Yeah. This has been published in the Villager and the I-70 Scout as required under state statute. The board has jurisdiction to proceed. Thank you, Mr. Hill. And I, I believe we have uh, Commissioner Jackson 
so once he's back on the line, so as soon as we finish this, um, we'll, I, I don't know what we can do to, um, maybe, Mr. Call, you could talk about what we do to include her vote or whether we just go on past our previous um, item. But let's go ahead and go forward with um, this floodplain management regulation presentation. Ms. Lou? Yes. Good morning, the County Commissioners. Sue Liu is standing engineer services division for this case before you this morning. LDC County, that's your zero two amendment for land development, code updating block time management regulations. The public hearing was published in literature on June 18, 2020, and the I-70 scale on June 23, 2020. Mm -hmm. The full time management regulation has been required to be updated and revised. Uh, by the Federal Emergency Management Agency to meet a minimum national flood insurance program requirement. The proposed amendment will bring the county regulation into compliance with this requirement. The background of this project is that the county has been participating in this program since 1977. As a participating community, the county is responsible for making sure the county's flood when management regulations meet or exceed the minimum requirements. The map update process for this update began on June 30th, 2016. Basically, FEMA presented a new flood engine study for a flood plan study, including 13 major drainage ways. County properties are located within a five drainage way. They are Cherry Creek, Happy Canyon Creek, Senate Creek, and Nam Creek and the West Toby Creek. During this review process, it has come to a FEMA's attention that a more accurate hydrologic analysis has been com complete for the Sand Creek, Cool Creek, and the Murphy Creek. The new hydrology has the potential to reduce the flood hazard risk to those drainage ways. Due to those issues, the flood hazard data for those three creeks is no longer included in this updates. The actual 90 days appeal process for the map update began in June 29, 2017. FEMA did not receive any appeal uh, to the proposed revision during this time to the flood insurance study and the base flood elevation. The changes in the county land development code are pretty minor. We are changing two portions of the code. It's a section 1-5.8, paragraph A, and the section 4-3.4.B, paragraph 1. We are proposing to change the date of the effective study and the map from September 28, 2018 to a new date of September 4, 2020. The county do not do a lot of referral on this case because we did an extensive outreach program with the map revision changes. And uh, we're sending letters directly to every property owner's impact by this flood plan change. And the updated map results mean no additional structures map in those strategy. Way. The five staff findings are listed in the staff report. Um, the staff are recommending the approval of this amendment as well as the planning commission. Um, that uh, includes my presentation, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Questions from commissioners? Okay, hearing none, uh, it, is, it is a general business item, not a public hearing, but I will ask if there's anyone on the line who who would like to speak on this issue, and um, you'll need to press star three to unmute, and I'll ask Michelle if there's anyone who would like to speak on this item. There is no one in the queue on this item. Thank you, Michelle. Okay, um, hearing no one, uh, no one from the public who would like to speak, I'll entertain a motion. Madam Chair. 
Go ahead, Commissioner Baker. I'm, I'm uh, ready to make that motion. Um, um, in the case of LBC 20-002 concerning proposed amendments to the Land Development Code, Chapter 1, General Provisions, Modification of Section 1-5.3, Natural Hazards and Features Maps, Paragraph A, and Chapter 4, Development Guidelines and Standards, Modification of Section 4-3.4, B, basis for establishing the floodplain and special flood hazard areas, paragraph one, to update the Arapahoe County, Colorado and incorporated areas, flood insurance study, flood insurance rate map, as prepared by the Federal Emergency Management Agency to the new September 4th, 2020 maps. The Board of County Commissioners has read the proposed code amendment and the board summary report and has considered additional information presented during the public hearing. We find ourselves in agreement with the staff findings one through five set forth in the board summary report dated July 9, 2020 with the code amendment to update the flood insurance study and flood insurance rate map as proposed and hereby approve the amendments to section 1-5.3 plan A and 4-3.4 plan B plan 1 of the land development code with the following two conditions of approval. All minor modifications, number one, all minor modifications to the text are required prior to incorporation into the existing land development code. And two, the amended floodplain management regulations will be effective and integrated into the existing land development code on September 4th, 2020. And I will say that this is the motion for approval as submitted by staff. Thank you, Commissioner Baker. Have a second. Madam Chair, this is uh, Commissioner Hall. I'll second the uh, mo motion. Thank you. Motion made by Commissioner Baker, seconded by Commissioner Holman. All in favor, please say aye. 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 I believe we have Commissioner Jackson back on the call. Uh, yes, I'm back. My apologies. No, no problem. Thank you. And, um, and I do want to, and so that motion passes unanimously. I do want to go back. Um, to the public hearing, Commissioner Jackson, unfortunately, this is the problem with um, some of our virtual calls that um, uh, sometimes uh, our communication, we get dropped, and um, that Commissioner Jackson will be emailing her vote, uh, which was approval of LDC 20-003 Land Development Code Amendment Recreational Marijuana to our uh, clerk for the board administrator so that we that vote will be counted and that means the vote will be 4-1 on that particular issue. So we will go forward to our next public hearing which is USR 19-001 Serenity House Use by Special Review. Our presenter is Elton Dembrowski, Planner to Public Works and Development, and Mr. H Mr. Robert Hill, Senior Assistant Attorney, would you please set the foundation? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this is a new site special review application. It has it is notice for public hearing by publication in the villager by um, sending letters to adjacent properties, and by posting the property. Uh, the board has jurisdiction to proceed. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Ms. Dombrowski, would you go ahead, please? Sure. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, again, this is Kelsey Dombrowski with the Planning Division. The final case this morning is USR 19-001, used by special review for Serenity House Assisted Living. 
The applicant is Serenity House Assisted Living, which currently owns and operates the existing assisted living facility located at 2337 South Forest Drive in Denver. And the subject property is owned R3 and in Commissioner District 1. The current assisted living facility at this location has eight residents, making it a type A group home, which is a use by right in the R3 zone district. The applicant is proposing to increase that resident count from eight to 10, and that increase to 10 residents would make the facility a type B group home, which requires a use by special review in the R3 zone district, which is the case that we're reviewing this morning. The new residents in the assisted living facility would reside in an existing bedroom in the established facility, and there would be no changes to the property. And additionally, the new residents will not have vehicles, and so there will be no increase in traffic in the neighborhood or parking needs. The fire district has reviewed the proposed increase in residents and has no objection. Staff recommends approval of this case based on the findings in the staff report and subject to the conditions of approval. And I'm available to answer any questions, and I believe our applicant has called in as well, should you wish to speak with them and get more information or ask them any questions. Thank you, Ms. Nostomposky. Um, are there any questions? Madam Chair? Go ahead, Commissioner Jeff. Yes, um, as far as we know, this um, uh, facility um, and this program has not received any complaints or special um, issues um, coming from their current Correct. As far as I know, I have I have not received any concerns from neighbors or anyone else in the neighborhood, and I believe the applicant could speak more to their Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment um, certifications and licenses, but I have not been approached with any uh, concerns or complaints about the facility. That's great. And um, in terms of the size of the building and so on, there's um, sufficient room or additional um, additional folks from your perspective? So there's an existing bedroom that's currently unused in the home. So, there's, so the home was constructed with that bedroom or currently has that bedroom in it, and it's just not housing residents right now, and the space is, the space is already accounted for. So um, we were communicating with the fire district, and they did two reviews on this project just because of the duration of the review timeline, and they saw no issue with the increase in residents uh, during either of their reviews. Thank you. And we're going to hear from the applicant, is that right? I believe so. Yep, they were planning to call in, so I think they just need to um, unmute. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Okay, I'll go ahead and ask the applicant to press star three to unmute, and if you would state your name and address for the record, please, and then go ahead. Okay, here, we'll take them live right now. Hang on one minute. Where'd they go? Okay, if you could go ahead and state your name and address for the record and then proceed. Uh, Mike Zistlis, 2337 South Forest Drive in Denver, 80222. Yeah, please go ahead and um, if you would like to, I don't know if you heard Commissioner Jackson's uh, question, but um, she can repeat those if you were, if you didn't hear them. I'm so sorry, I stepped away from the phone for a minute. This is Mike Zislis from Serenity House Assisted Living. Am I the person that's supposed to be chewed up right now? Yes. Yeah. 
and you're you are actually live. So great. Um, okay, thank you. I stepped away uh, from the phone for a minute, handling a uh, clinical issue with one of my uh, panels. All right, no problem. So if you want to um, go ahead and uh, if you have a, if some comments to uh, what you'd like to make, but Commissioner Nancy Jackson did have a question. Sure. So, yeah. I think we can start with the questions and I can clarify as if anything comes up. Okay. Commissioner Jackson, please go ahead. Yeah, well, well, thank you for, um, um, I don't think we're going to cheer you up. Um, I, I hope you didn't put your armor on. Didn't you. No, no. We, we, we just want to, you know, I just want to make sure that um, uh, that we're um, kind of investigating appropriately. So my question was just, if, if, you know, how you get along with the neighbors, and that's always the question we get. Um, is, is this whole Mumbi thing. So I just wanted to make sure that um, that you had some kind of positive um, relationship with the neighborhood and that you had sufficient room in, in your um, facility to work two more people. So those are my questions. Sure. Um, in terms of the, uh, the neighborhood integration, um, we just blend right into the residential community. There's no commercial signage. Um, we come in and, and we upgrade the properties. We have new roofs, uh, nice landscaping, uh, nice outdoor patio area. So from a property value standpoint, we, we do nothing but upgrade the property and make it look more appealing. Um, so we have a, a, a nice relationship with the neighbors, no, no problems in that regard. Um, in terms of the space, uh, we have sufficient space. We're simply converting one room that was used more for storage, so it's already existing, and now we're just using it for resident purposes. So, yes, we did have the space. Thank you. you want to tell us a little bit about your program? Sure. It's a uh, residential assisted living home licensed by uh, the Colorado Department of Public Health and Env Environment Health Facilities Division. And we serve largely a senior population that's frail, elderly, may have some physical challenges, may have some cognitive challenges, so they're unable to live independently out in the community. And uh, so we're, we're giving them a different housing option, one in more of a residential setting rather than kind of warehousing them in a large high-rise building somewhere. Madam Chair, we'll have a question. Madam Chair? Thank you. Go ahead, Commissioner Conti. Thank you. Um, and thank you for being here today to answer just a few questions. Um, that was my, you know, kind of, uh, Commissioner Jackson was kind of getting to a little bit of it. Um, you know, uh, this is in my district, and, and I am, I have uh, walked in this area, and these homes do not appear overly large. Uh, as a matter of fact, from my knowledge, the, the largest of them is about four bedrooms. So I guess I'm curious how, how, if you could tell us the specific how, how are you getting 10 residents in there, and do you have any staff that lives on the property as well? Yeah. What we do is we, we when we set these up, we convert the garage into uh, resident bedrooms and a disability-rated bathroom. So as you drive past this, this property, um, you don't – you may not realize that there's actually more resident rooms, but that's what was done in this particular property, and we expanded back, uh, sort of in the back of the property to enlarge it. So the, there's a basement area that's basically the footprint of the entire upstairs, so it's actually very large, and uh, we have private rooms, and we have what are called semi-private rooms separated with a privacy curtain, like you might see in a hospital. Um, okay. So in certain rooms, we'll have two people. 
And in this particular case, the, uh, the storage, one of the storage rooms, large storage rooms downstairs, will be, was converted into uh, a resident bedroom. So that's part of how we do it as well, resident, two residents downstairs and all the other residents upstairs. Okay, so how, how many staff do you have that live on the property? We have a house manager who lives on site, and she has a full apartment downstairs. So that's really the only person who really lives on site who's got resident care responsibility. So, um, and then we have hourly staff coming in as well um, to support the care of the residents. So how many, um, how many staff do you have that come in and uh, service the residents in the property on a daily basis? There's typically two per shift, so two folks there for the, for the eight to ten residents. Okay. Okay. Uh, and two shifts, I'm assuming 12 a.m. to 12 p.m., 12 p.m. to 12 a.m.? Roughly, yeah. And then we have uh, um, some supplemental stuff happening. We're, uh, with some rehab, uh, now with the, um, uh, we're doing some social and recreational activity program now, uh, out on an outdoor patio basis due to the new, uh, uh governmental public health rule. And do you have some kind of means for people to get down the stairs to get out to that basement patio? Uh, the patio is like not a basement, it's in the backyard. Oh. But the basement room is specifically for ambulatory folks who have, are extremely good in terms of their physical functioning. We wouldn't have an elderly, frail person navigating those stairs. Okay. I didn't know if you had some kind of stair lift or something that was in use or, or uh, we, had we don't. Else. I, I, I've thought about that, but I just really have decided that that the vast majority of our residents are upstairs on the first floor, and every once in a while, we may have a person that could navigate stairs, and that's what the lower level would be for. Okay. So your patio that you spoke of that is um, for outdoor um, physical activity, um, yeah. is that elevated on a deck upstairs, or is it something yeah. to walk out property? It's not a walkout basement, and it's accessed okay. from a, a door that leaves an area adjacent, adjacent to the dining area. You're walking right out to a Trex covered patio. Okay. Okay, so covered patio, uh, like a right. Trex kind of thing. Okay, got it. Yes. Okay, very, it, sounds, it sounds very nice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any additional questions? Commissioners? Thank you, sir. And not hearing any others, is there uh, anyone? I'll open the public hearing, um, uh, public comment portion um, of this agenda item. Is there anyone online who would like to speak about this item? And if you would like to, please press the star three to unmute. Michelle, do we have anyone? No. Okay. All right. Not, uh, not hearing that we have anyone who would like to speak on this issue, I will close the public hearing and ask for a motion. Madam Chair, go ahead, Commissioner Cotty. I will be happy to make that motion. Uh, in the <laughs> and I'm going to confirm with legal uh, that we do we do in this particular case want the motion uh, that is uh, consistent with the planning staff with conditions. Correct? Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, in the case of USR 19-001, Serenity House, used by special review, the county commissioners have reviewed the staff report, including all exhibits and attachments, and have listened to the applicant's presentation and any public comment as presented in the public hearing. I hereby move to approve this application based on the findings in the staff report, subject to the following conditions. 
Prior to the signature of the final copy of this use by special review, the applicant must address public works comments and concerns. And number two, the applicant shall apply for and be issued a building permit conforming R4 occupancy requirements are in place per the building division's referral comment and provide evidence of building permit approval prior to the board chair's signature on the use by special review. Motion made by Commissioner Conti. Do I have a second? I'll second it, Nancy Jackson. Seconded by Commissioner Jackson. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. Uh, we now are in the a point in our agenda where there are commissioner comments. Are there any commissioners who would like to make a comment this morning? Madam Chair? Go ahead, Commissioner Baker. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to say that there were uh, there was an item on our consent agenda, item 6H, <clears throat> where we approved a uh, funding, a joint a jointly funded veteran service office in the vicinity of the VA Medical Center. And I know Commissioner Holan has worked very long and hard to get to this point. Um, both he and I have been talking to veterans in the Aurora area, and I just want to commend him for his work on this. I also would like to say that um, Aurora, City of Aurora is um, uh, considering the use of some marijuana funds, uh, some mar marijuana taxes in supporting this. Um, and also Adams County will be involved in this as well. So this is a great example of cooperation between two counties and the City of Aurora, which is in both counties, to try to um, increase our ability to serve our veterans who sacrificed so much um, and who need a place to be able to get their benefits and get advice and guidance. I think this is an example uh, that could be emulated elsewhere. And um, congratulations to Commissioner Holman. Uh, Madam Chair, this is Commissioner Holman. Go ahead, Commissioner. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. I, I uh, as Jeff indicated, we've worked uh, for some time to make to bring this issue to fruition. Uh, Aurora has a tremendous amount of, of veterans, and uh, the ability uh, for those particularly elderly veterans and those severely disabled to have access to our county veterans uh, office here in Littleton um, it's been, a, it's been a struggle over the years, and I think this is, a, as, as Jeff suggested, a, a great example of uh, uh, how, how we can collaborate with other counties to reduce the, the overall fiscal uh, uh, impact that this will have on, on Arapahoe County, and we'll share those, uh, um, we'll share those costs to allow us to provide uh, on-site on uh, veteran service office uh, support for our veterans. So. I want to thank Jeff and also the members of, uh, of the uh, of the Repo County Commissioner Commission who worked so hard, and also acknowledge that we have a tremendous uh, uh, staff uh, of veteran service officers uh, who will uh, who will provide these kinds of services to uh, to veterans in Aurora. So thanks again. Well, thank you. Thanks to both of you for all your hard work on this. Really important. So thank you both. Any other commissioner comments? Okay, hearing none, uh, meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.